Um, I do want to welcome you all this evening. We have a nice little crowd. Um, we are here to do the quarterly update on the NC-12 Rodanthe Bridge uh, State Transportation Improvement Program Project B, 2500B. And today is March 4th, 2021. Uh, tonight we're going to ask that uh, your microphones are muted when you are online, um, during the presentation especially. Uh, if you wish to submit a comment or a question, you can either type it in the chat box or you can call 984-205-6615 and when prompted, put in the project code 8679. Um, your message will then be transcribed and we'll receive it during the meeting. And if by chance it comes in later, you know, sometimes there's a little delay. Um, we will include that in our next meeting, and we will attempt to get back to you. Uh, we are recording this tonight, and it will be the video of it will be posted online, probably Monday. I'd like to say tomorrow, but probably Monday. So we're going to start off and just give you an introduction of the DOT staff in attendance. We're going to review the past update meeting questions and responses from our December meeting. Uh, Pablo will present a project update, and then we will take questions and comments. Uh, you'll see down in the bottom left-hand corner of this slide, in many of the slides, uh, there's the information on either using the chat box or the phone number to call in. Uh, DOT staff on the project here, we have Sterling Baker, who's our Division Engineer for Highway Division 1, Pablo Hernandez, who's our Resident Engineer for Division 1 and our Project Manager, Byron Kyle, who's our Design Build Project Engineer, and I'm Diane Wilson, a Public Involvement Officer, and I will be your moderator this evening. So we're going to do a review of the December 3rd, 2020 update meeting. At that meeting, responses to questions submitted at the September 3rd meeting were presented. Uh, Pablo pre presented an update on the project status, and then we took questions from um, individuals online or via email. And the responses to the questions that were submitted on December 3rd followed. Question was, where will surfers park when the road is removed? And NCDOT has responded that the road from the refuge boundary north will be removed. But NCDOT is having internal discussions about how to maintain that portion of NC-12 from the roundabout to the north end of the Maryland Beach subdivision. We're also looking at parking and turnaround improvements that will be better than those shown in the current plan. Question was, where will the electric cable be located? Now, the electric cable will be suspended on the underside of the bridge, under the deck, except for the last five or six spans on each end of the bridge. The cable will then transition from under the deck to approximately four feet underground and continue following the bridge and roadway alignment. It will be located solely in the NCDOT right-of-way or Cape Hatteras Electric East. Yeah, that was very simple. We had very few questions last time. You can see again the chat box and the call-in number down here on the bottom left corner. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Pablo for the March 4th update. Uh, thank you, Diane, for getting us started today. And thanks for everybody uh, joining us, uh, uh, unfortunately, in yet another virtual meeting. Uh, hopefully soon we'll be able to conduct these in person. But uh, in the meantime, just kind of want to give you a snapshot of where we're at with the project. Um, uh, as of uh, this week, we're about 63% complete. And that's just taking a, a good average of all the parts and pieces that are needed to, to build the bridge uh, without getting into too much detail. Um, expenditures uh, as of February 25th, which is our uh, billing cycle is the 25th of every month on this particular project. Um, we're, we're 
just a little bit under uh, $121 million uh, out of a total of $155 million, uh, which is the uh, adjusted contract value. And as I mentioned last, uh, at our last quarterly update meeting, um, that value or any, any of the money that we uh, expenditures to date uh, includes the design, permitting, and claim settlement uh, as we have had some, uh, uh, did have some delays at the beginning of the project due to uh, acquiring the permits, the envir various environmental permits. So with that said, we'll go to the next slide. Um, as I like to say, with these long bridges, everybody likes to know how many piles you put in or how many decks you cast or how many parts and pieces you've put together. And so this is my slide that describes that. Um, out of the 108 bridge bents or support piers, uh, we've installed 75 of those. And 75 of those uh, bridge piers contain the 253 piles uh, out of the 352 piles that will be uh, installed for the project. So that means we've got 99 more piles to go. Uh, you see those piles being delivered virtually every day to the project, and uh, we're, the, the contractor is making every strides to drive uh, at least one, one, if not two piles a day. Um, one of the new items that I've added is the uh, girders. Um, there are 388 beams that essentially support the the concrete road surface, uh, 228 out of those 388 concrete girders have been set to date. Um, and, and then, of course, of the, uh, the bridge decks, we've got 107 that will, be, uh, that will form this entire bridge, and uh, we've got 64 casts to date. And as you've noticed with the access equipment that the contractor has out there, it's essentially a moving assembly line. and it can only go as fast as the slowest portion, and that slowest portion could just be about any particular operation that could be affected by weather, equipment, material deliveries. Uh, so, uh, so with that said, you know there some some weeks are better than others. I'll go ahead and say that, and uh, but we're we're always uh, uh, impressed when we do have those good weeks where we get six piling in a week two bridge decks cast, and eight girders set. That's a good week. Speaking of piling, you know, as I've mentioned in other updates, uh, the north end of the project has uh, been challenging for the pile installation. Uh, that, that challenge continues. Uh, one of the techniques that we uh, are seeing some positive results in is where we're actually uh, driving the pile uh, uh, maybe a third of the way and then actually taking a very large auger or drill bit and loosening the soil inside that pile and then resume pile driving. Um, we, we tried different techniques of that augering and we think we, we found something that, like I said, gives us some positive results to, to hopefully ease that pile installation. Uh, another thing that's happening at the north end of the project is Cape Hatteras Electric Cooperative has started uh, their relocation of the, uh, their transmission lines at the north end. Uh, right now what you're seeing is some of the power, uh, the actual aerial power line work, uh, and hopefully later this spring uh, they'll be uh, uh, doing some of the underground um, uh, conduit uh, installation like they did on the south end of the project uh, this past uh, November, December, January. Uh, again, as I mentioned on the south end of the project, you know, they are, Cape Hatteras Electric started with phase one of their relocation in, uh, in late November. Uh, they were able to install those underground pipes that will then contain the, uh, the transmission cables. Um, and these are the underground pipes that Diane described in the in the uh, one of the responses to the questions at last month or last quarter's uh, uh, update session. As we transition, as we transition from the underside of the bridge deck to the ground, 
these are those, uh, this is where the cable will run approximately four feet underground. Um, the other thing that uh, we, uh, we just want to make sure the, the public and everybody is aware that the early morning concrete uh, pours will probably uh, resume in mid-April when we start getting some more warmer temperatures and um, as well as uh, increased daylight hours and we'll probably start to see activity on the project pick up. Um, one of the other things that has taken place and if you've driven by the project in the last couple weeks you probably see some of the roadway work that's taken place at the very north end of the project. There's been some, some, some um, joining of forces and change of ownership in some of the local, uh, one of our local subcontractors that does our paving and earthwork. Uh, so there, there's, there's, in some respects, there's new teams in place that are doing the roadway work, but also some of the old teams is still in place. And again, this is all just in, in a way to try to get prepared uh, for what we're, um, you know, what we're shooting for is a late, 2021 or early 2022 uh, bridge completion and so anything that we can get done now uh, especially before the the typical spring and summer resurfacing of the various uh, uh, roadways around in North Carolina begin we, uh, we want to try to take advantage of the earthwork and paving that we can right now with that that's that's pretty much a snapshot. I, I try to come up with something new and different for every meeting um, and hopefully I've answered your questions or given you something that uh, you want to ask us further about. Okay, with that we will take questions. What are the odds do you think the two will meet perfectly? Th those odds are very high. Uh, that, that is an engineer and surveyor's um, constant worry when you're building a bridge from multiple directions. When do you estimate the first car will cross the bridge? Um, I'm going to have to be very broad with that and still stay, say in the late 2021. It's going to be either in the December 21 time frame or the uh, early 2022 time frame. Do you have a slide on what will happen to the S turns road? Uh, n no, in this particular presentation that we put together we do not have a slide. Um, uh, that something that we can provide offline uh, as well as at the next quarterly meeting, but um, uh, th there's really not a lot to show in, in the plans other than uh, our, our contract drawings show the footprint of NC-12 through the S-turns and it shows it cross-hatched which means that's pavement that will be removed and the turnaround that we will install at the uh, uh, north end of the Merlot Beach subdivision. Um, Wayne asked, what are plans to ease traffic on 12 during high visitor season? Uh, as far as the, the, the construction, I'm, I'm going to kind of focus that in on the construction activities. Uh, when we get to the high visitor season, uh, which, you know, typically we start to see that in uh, mid, mid June, which of course I'm going pre COVID here. So bear with me, but uh, pre COVID the, we would see those traffic volumes increase in the middle of June and that's when we have restrictions that we do not allow uh, daytime land closures uh, from June 15th to September 15th. Um, also, uh, we, when we're not in that June 15th to September 15th time frame and we do allow land closures, we also have some restrictions on uh, the time of day that they can be out there, especially on a Friday. Uh, but the, uh, I, I don't, with the way that we're tackling this project and most of, most of the work has taken place um, not within the existing NC-12 corridor, I don't see a tremendous amount of impact on traffic. Chip says um, he was running late, but 
will you have a portion of the bridge that can be fished from? Uh, no, there are no plans for uh, providing fishing access on this particular structure. Are there anticipated lane closures in the spring as earthworks and paving projects resume? Uh, thank, thank you for that question because that just reminded me, I, I may have jumped over one of my bullet points in one of my slides. Um, right now with the paving work that we're doing at the north end of the project, we can do all that paving without affecting travel on NC-12. Uh, currently, the, the, our new roadway and paving contractor is evaluating options on what he can or what he feels comfortable doing on the south end of the project where there could be more uh, uh, involvement with NC-12 traffic, but uh, because of the, uh, forgive this word, newness of the roadway paving contractor, I, I, I need to give him a little time to kind of get his bearings and get his, um, get his game plan together. Deb asks, do you expect flooding at the entrance to the bridge at Route 12 at both ends? No. So what's the average clearance under the bridge at the highest point? I represent the sailing community that regularly visits River And that's Dave Grip asked that question. Uh, the clearance under the bridge is approximately 15 feet, if my memory serves me right, I'll look that up. But th this bridge will not be, uh, it will not have a high rise or a humpback in it uh, like you would see on, say, the, uh, you know, the Oregon Inlet Bridge or the bridges uh, over Currituck Sound. And um, uh, that dimension actually is 17.3 feet from the water line to the bottom of those large concrete beams that we're setting. So we do now we have another question. John asks, so when the when will the roundabout at the southern end be started and completed? I hope the construction will not pay, take place during the summer rental season. Why not now and get it done to let people get used to using it? You could block off the and we ran out of money, apparently. Uh, as, as far as uh, completing the roundabout and putting it into service, uh, we, we actually looked at that as an option uh, for those very reasons that you mentioned to, to get people used to it. The, the problem is, or the concern that we have is, if we had completed the roundabout, but we're still trying to maintain traffic on NC-12 in its existing alignment from, say, the Liberty gas station to the, to the S-turns because the bridge is not completed, it will force a lot of traffic to have to traverse a majority of the roundabout, which then in turn could add a lot of uh, traffic backups, especially in our high-volume uh, high time frames. Um, as far as, as building or completing the roundabout, um, you know, those, that, that roadway work, when it takes place, it will not be, if it is during the high visitor season, it would only be able to occur at night, which I think is very unlikely. Um, so I, I, it would not surprise me if we see some roadway work at the south end take place later this spring and then resume in, say, the October time frame of uh, 21. And how many miles of NC-12 does this abate Denver Buffalo? Uh, about 2.8 miles of uh, NC-12 will be bypassed by the, um, by the bridge. Is there a bike lane on the bridge? Um, there will not be a dedicated bike lane on the bridge. Uh, the, the bridge will have eight foot wide shoulders, uh, exactly like what you uh, see or 
or, or what, what we built on the Oregon Inlet Bassnight Bridge, uh, 12 foot lanes with eight foot shoulders in both directions. Um, and, and I guess speaking of shoulders, the rest of the NC12 pavement that is part of the project uh, will have anywhere from an eight foot shoulder to a four foot paved shoulder, which is uh, very similar to the rest of uh, the paved portions of NC12 from Oregon Inlet to essentially Ocracoke. And I'm just going to go ahead and let you know that our next update meeting will be on June 3rd, which is a Thursday, 6 p.m. Uh, we're hoping that it can be in person, but if not, we will let you know. I just went ahead of time. And um, we'll be at 6 p.m. And, and we will put out that information of about a week and a half ahead of time. Um, question from John is, what are you doing to prevent ocean overwash in wash? into Mirlo Beach after the road is removed? Are you installing some protection going east to west to protect what has become a traditional washout area? At the, at the end of, um, at the end of, um, at the north end of the Merlo Beach subdivision where the uh, remnant portion of NC-12 uh, will, will terminate, uh, we will be leaving in place the sandbags that are currently inside the dune south of the refuge boundary. We will be installing some sandbags and another dune running east-west at, uh, at that termination point of, of uh, the remnant portion of NC-12. Uh, as far as any other overwash, um, you know, one of the challenges that we all experience is, is, is overwash from multiple points along NC-12 from within the wildlife refuge to areas that have houses in front uh, or adjacent to uh, uh, oceanfront houses adjacent to NC-12. And uh, the department will do its best to continue to maintain a safe, drivable surface on that remnant portion of NC-12. Tony says, thanks for the updates. Even if the next meeting is in person, will, be there, will there be a way to access it remotely as well? And yes, there will be. Um, moving forward, even when we go to live meetings, um, if and when we do that, uh, and DOT allows it, there will be um, remote access as well. Okay, so Dave would like to know how far from shore is the farthest point? Yeah, um, uh, actually at Corvino Drive, the uh, bridge is approximately 1,400 feet from the south side shoreline. Um, Average in the 1,200, well, uh, excuse me, 1,200 feet from the shoreline. Uh, once the bridge makes that sharp jump handle curve, uh, and it's in that long straightaway, it will be in that 1,200 foot range from the shoreline. We're here. We're trying to reach everyone who is possible. So thank you. So thanks for being available for those of us here. Those of us up here. We're going to go ahead and close this out to stop our recording. Um, if you have questions or comments, you can always send them to um, Pablo via the project. Thank you, thank you. Uh, the project email address um, or on the NCDOT site, you can contact us. Um, Doc, if you use this phone number at any time, 